talk a little bit about uh, Lucy's history and um, how you first you know, got involved with Lucy and later saved Lucy. Well, it's a, it's a funny story of how I got involved with Lucy. I've actually been involved with Lucy practically my whole life. Um, as a little kid growing up in Margate, I remember my mother bringing me here in the very early 60s when she was on her last legs of, uh, of being allowed to be open before the city condemned it in 1962. Um, and then I used to break into it with my friends after that, in 19, you know, in the, the mid-60s, because that was the thing to do. It wasn't that much else to do in Margate, you know. Um, then in, in seventh grade, I remember getting involved with one of the teachers whose name was Julie Woods. He was an awesome teacher. He's passed away now, but he was part of the Save Lucy committee, and I would help him, help Lucy, and help him by selling candy door-to-door -door in school and in the community. So I've really been involved with Lucy since seventh grade. Fast forward to uh, the late 90s, um, I was very friendly with Josephine Harron, who was the president and co-founder of the Save Lucy Committee. Joe lived on the same street where I grew up here in Margate. And um, I got involved trying to help her with the restoration of the monument because at that time I was working for the city of Margate. And it was just easy for me to sort of cut through red tape for her with a lot of things that were going on with Lucy. So I got more and more involved eventually became the board vice president of the nonprofit board that runs Lucy. And then in um, 1999, 1998, the state came in and said, if you're going to continue to ask us for money, you need to really grow this organization and, and make it more professional, not just a mom and pop organization, which it had been for all those years. And so the state said, you know, we will give you some money to hire an executive director in a, in a grant program that was uh, governed by the New Jersey Historical Commission. So a job descri description was written, and I was one of the seven applicants that applied for it. And obviously, I got the job. Um, I was the most qualified, having been involved in so much of the monument's restoration. So December 1st, 2000, I became Lucy's first executive director. And when I took over here, uh, Lucy was doing probably about three to four thousand dollars a season in sales in the gift shop, and maybe a thousand people a summer would take the tour. I'm happy to tell you that in the 12 years I've been here, we've raised five million dollars for Lucy, and we welcome about a hundred thousand visitors a year. We're very aggressive in the way we market Lucy today. Uh, we have a, a, a very aggressive marketing campaign, that being print, radio, and the internet. The internet is extraordinary. Uh, social media through Facebook and, and Twitter now. Lucy has her own Twitter account. She tweets. Um, we do uh, selective radio. We do selective print. Uh, we've dabbled with billboards. We've tried the banner planes that fly over the beach. We try to, first of all, we have to identify our market, and then we go after that segment through the media. Um, we, we target toward baby boomers, toward parents who were kids, who came here as kids, and we target grandparents who still are bringing their kids and their grandkids. Um, and so we're very, very aggressive in the way we market Lucy. Facebook has been extraordinary, uh, but the other side of the coin is that as more and more non-gaming things go online in Atlantic City, there's less and less of a reason to leave Atlantic City. We're obviously a drive-to. We're not, you know, you're not just going to stumble upon Lucy if you're walking the boardwalk. So we have to be even that much more aggressive in getting the message out to the people that come to Atlantic City and to Ocean City and Wildwood and Cape May. We try to think outside the box with fundraising and with special events. Um, back in 2003, we put on a concert in Boardwalk Hall. My background is casino entertainment. And because of our relationship with the Atlantic City Convention Authority, we were able to get Boardwalk Hall. And we did a concert in the building as a benefit for Lucy. Didn't turn out financially the way we had hoped because the artist that we had originally booked bailed on us at the 11th hour. And we went with another group of artists that just didn't sell, didn't have the box office appeal that we had hoped they would. In 2002, a uh, husband and wife approached us to rent the monument to do a 40th anniversary dinner and sleepover. That got us world press. AP picked it up and we were getting phone calls from radio stations as far away as Los Angeles wanting to talk to us about the couple that slept inside the elephant. We did um, 
a Valentine's dinner inside the elephant. That was a complete sellout. We did two uh, seatings, 20 couples each, and the entire menu was created by our uh, board vice president and the general manager of the Beach Reel, Jason Tell, and everything on the menu was an aphrodisiac. And it received rave reviews. It was a huge success. Uh, the following year, we had planned to do it, but weather prevented us from doing it, and we may do it again this year. What's happening now, and like, you know, what effect has that had pretty much on you know, any um, you know, uh, historical landmark or attraction you know, such as this? Um, the, the economic downturn hasn't really hurt Lucy as much as it's hurt other entities. Some of the numbers you mentioned about those large donations, they were specific bequests that were left to Lucy throughout the, different, throughout the years. Um, just last year we had a lady who passed away who was never a volunteer here but had a very strong fondness for the elephant as a child. When she passed away she left us close to forty thousand dollars. So that is not, um, that's not the norm. Uh, what we have seen is while outright donations to the monument have decreased, sales in the gift shop and people taking tours have increased. Um, so I think that because the economy is such that it is and gas is so expensive, more people stay closer to home. And Lucy is still a great value. A family of four can take a tour of Lucy for under $30. You can't go to the movies for that. And she's, you know, she's so unique that she still has that, that attraction to people coming to the shore. In 2007, I believe, Lucy was hit by lightning. Um, that necessitated us removing the howdah off of her back and rebuilding it. While insurance covered the damage that was directly related to the lightning, it didn't cover the damage that was already, that was uncovered to the structure just from weather and age. So those kinds of expenses that we, we can't forecast, we can't plan, are what caused those deficits. Then in 2009, a windstorm came out of nowhere and we had a tent sitting on the ground right here outside Lucy. It lifted the tent with such force that it broke her tail. That was a $60,000 repair. Our deductible for insurance is $25,000. So these, these monumental, or mammoth, if you'll pardon the pun, kinds of uh, things that have been hit with. And last year we were hit by lightning again. Um, so anyone that tells you lightning doesn't strike twice in the same spot, they lie. Um, and then we were getting a grant from the New Jersey Historical Commission for years and years and years, and the state cut that out. So that was a $35,000 hit to us. When we took over the beach grill, there were uh, improvements that had to be made to the building to bring it up to code. Because the way a private entity can operate a business is different than the way a regulated, audited nonprofit can operate the business. We have to do everything by the book. Everything has to be accounted for. So there are expenses in, in, in fire suppression and in, in payroll taxes and things that weren't necessarily being done by a private entity. All of these things combined, and then the fake hurricane, which cost us $22,000, add all that up, that's where the deficit comes from. This year in 2012, knock on wood, so far, no hurricanes, no windstorms, no lightning strikes. We had a banner summer, tourism is up, and hopefully we're, we'll be back in the black. And we have a good working relationship with the city administration and the city government right now. Public Works could not be better to us. Anything we need, they come and take care of for us. And in fact, tomorrow we have, we're sitting down with the city to negotiate the extension of our lease for the land. The question of ownership, Steve, uh, is still out there. We firmly believe that the Save Lucy Committee owns the three structures. The city believes that they have claim to the three structures. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be resolved tomorrow but we're working together for the common goal of promoting, preserving, and, and, and interpreting Lucy for generations to come. Uh, Lucy is, is such a valuable asset to Margate, and, and I believe that the city government today recognizes that, and we're hopeful that our negotiations tomorrow will be fruitful and we can move forward. I don't know, again, I don't know if the ownership question will get answered, but we still believe we own it. One of the uh, criticisms that also came up around that time was uh, about your salary, about you know whether someone who is in charge of a nonprofit should be getting uh, that salary. Um, 
talk a bit of, uh, about you know your defense of that. Um, my defense of my salary is that if you divide my salary by the number of hours I work, I work for under minimum wage. Um, what is your salary? Is right now my salary is just over eighty thousand dollars a year. Uh, the press itself ran an article, a, did a story on executive directors of nonprofits. I was the second lowest paid in the county, second lowest. Um, I, I justify my salary by the results of, of what we've accomplished here. We've raised over $5 million for Lucy in the 12 years I've been the executive director. We've welcomed over a million and a half people here, and we've put Lucy on the world's map as a major attraction. She is the number one non-gaming attraction that people inquire about with the convention authority. That's not my opinion. That's fact from the ACCVA. Uh, so what we're doing works, and we're going to continue doing it.